Hey guys, Dexy here. After I spent some quality time with the TiVo Flash, it's time for a review. Is it worth your money? Is it any good? Let's find out. This is the TiVo Flash, which is the newest 3D printer from the TiVo. It has a robust metal frame, Volcano hot end, dual cooling fans, Bowden style Titan extruder, proxy stopper sensors, build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 mm. It has the glass AC heated bed with the installation. There is options like BL Touch and 2100 stepper drivers. It comes as 50 or 98% pre assembled, and price varies from 288 up to 438 US dollars with the free shipping to most of the countries. In the shipping box, printer was very well secured with a protective foam so nothing was damaged. In the box you get the manual, visit card, heat bed springs with the nuts, AC cord, USB cable, tools, SD card, cable ties, frame screws and this print removable tool which is completely useless as it's not sharp at all. Next we have upper frame of the printer itself and the bottom part of the frame. Here you can see everything that was inside the box. Now it's a good time to recheck the smoothness of the heated bed platform and if the platform is loose, adjust the wheel bearings with a supply tool and don't forget to check and adjust the belts if needed. And now let's have a look on the internal components of this machine. I just removed the few screws from this red top plate and I slide it out. You can also remove this control box from the back of the printer if your printer is assembled. Very nice cable management TiVo has done here and all the wires are nicely isolated. TiVo Flash is powered by this 24 volt power supply, who powers the motherboard and all components except the heated bed, which powers the AC solid state relay, which is here on the right side. Motherboard is MKS Generation L, stepper drivers are TMC2100, which is great, as they are running stepper motors very quiet. Assembling this printer was very easy, after I recheck and adjust the roller wheels on the heated bed, I installed the two springs and I placed the heated bed on the platform. Then I place other two springs and tie down the nuts around halfway. Next I prepare the four frame screws with the washers and I carefully place the top frame in the place. Be very careful here and watch out for the glass plate. Then I leave the right side of the printer and I screw down the screws. Then I did the same on other side and that was pretty much it. Next stop is the wiring. I plug in the left Z stepper model and then the right one. Then I plug in the two meta connectors, one for the heated bed and one for the hot end and other components. Next is the extruder and the X stepper motor. Every cable is labeled so you cannot miss. The last is the X axis stop sensor. Now you can use these cable ties to make your wiring nice and organized. Something like this. Overall I'm very impressed with the design and the build quality of the TiVo Flash. Frame is robust and very strong. Bottom frame is made of 40x40 aluminum extrusions and the top frame of 200x40mm extrusions. Printer don't feel cheap and it feels like a quality machine. It has no 3D printer parts and in fact the only few parts are actually plastic on this machine. Everything is a metal. I like how the dual Z rod is connected with a belt and pulleys which makes them smooth and synchronized. Also all the belts are made from the quality rubber with a nice pulleys. Hot end and the heat bed cables are inside this nice cable housing. On the X carriage cover there is a two fans for cooling the filament, one of the each side which is great. Behind the nozzle under this cover is the place for optional BL touch for auto leveling. This sensor is measuring the Z height before every print which is great and with the BL touch you don't need to worry about your first layer. Next on the back of the printer there is an AC plug, fuse and the power on off switch. On the front there is a LCD screen, place for the full size SD card and the knob for navigation through the software. Now the software on this machine is a version of the Marlin, just like on most other 3D printers that I review on my channel. The things that I like about this software is that the TiVo has unhide plenty of options that you can change and tune this printer just the way you like. Things like motion, velocity, acceleration, jerk, steps, BL touch settings, bed leveling and many other, which is very good. Now since the printer is running on 24 volt and the heat bed is AC powered instead of DC, warming up this machine is super fast. In just a few minutes you can reach the starting print temperature, but there is one thing that I had to mention. 
According to my thermal camera, the temperature of the heated bed is off by 5 to 8 degrees, depending how high the temperature is. This is not a big deal and it can be adjusted in a firmware, but until then, just increase your heat bed temperature in your slicer by 5 degrees and you're gonna be good. In terms of slicer, for the TiVo Flash, you can use any slicer you like, for example on SD card and in a manual, you have tutorial how to set it up with the repeated host. For those who have the simplified 3D, you can use the ended free printing profile, just change your retraction distance to 3mm and retraction speed to 50mm. And then save your G-code to SD card, plug into the printer and you're good to go. Also I had to mention that you don't get any filament or the spool holder with this printer. Usually the Chinese 3D printer manufacturers include some filament in a package and the spool holder, which is not the case with the TiVo Flash. You do get some spool holder STL file that you can print, but there is a plenty of better options on a Thingiverse. I borrowed a spool holder from my Ender 3 and I ran my first test print, which was 3D Benji that I sliced with Acura. Print speed that I used here was 40 mm a second and the layer height was 0.2 mm. Noise level when the TiVo flash is printing is very similar to the noise on the standby and that's around 52 dB, which is not too bad as almost all of that noise are coming from the control box cooling fan, which you can replace with much quieter fan and you will have the much quieter 3D printer with these 2100 stepper drivers. For those who want to lower the noise without replacing the fan, you can print cover like this and you can just place it over the fan, which will lower the noise and protect the fan from the clogging if some parts of filament fell on it. Now let's talk about the print quality. Print quality out from the box on my 98% version was pretty good in terms of detail, overhangs, feed rate and etc. But I do have some signs of vibration and the Z wobble as you can see it here on my first test print. So at first I checked the Z lead screw and I found that the, these treader rod couplers need to be readjusted and the bearing wheels on a Z axis needs to be adjusted as well. After that I retest the Z axis by printing Halo Cube almost all the way to the top and as you can see now my results are way better than before and now I had no Z wobble issues. Next up was tuning the stepper drivers. First I check all stepper drivers voltage and I set them to 1 volt as that was recommended by manufacturer. Then I downloaded the vibration test cube and I did a lot of test prints with the different settings like printing at 60 mm a second, at 30 mm a second, then I combined stock acceleration, then I lowered the acceleration with the different values and I retested again. Then I retested with a spool holder on the top of the printer and without. I test the TL smoothers, I print some Benji slices with a simplified 3D, then I print some Benji slices with a Cura and so on. I did over 26 vibration test prints, 4 retraction test prints and 8 Benjis and here's what I find out. In terms of a Cura versus simplified 3D, the print quality was very similar if not identical with the boat slicers. I found out that the using the spool holder on the top of the printer makes vibration worse, especially in a high speed, and I recommend that you use the spool holder that is not attached to the printer frame. Also I found that acceleration in a firmware was set up way too high, and here are the best values according to my testing that you can use with your TiVo flash. After when you change the values, don't forget to save the settings. Now when I tune my printer, I print this awesome looking Viking statue in a silver PLA. I used Simplify 3D for the slicing this model with a combined infill. For example, I print this model in 10% infill way up to the horns and from the horns still up, I print in a 40% infill. This saves some filament and the printing time. When the printer was finished, I removed the supports with the pliers, which was not too hard and all supports came out nice and easy. The print results was fantastic and I print the sword as well. And here is how my Viking is looking in a close up. Awesome results and amazing 3D model as well. Next I print this planter ways in a blue PLA. I left the printer working over the night and in the morning this was the results. Flawlessly printed model and all the details came out great. Very nice indeed. Next I sliced the whole statue and I printed in a green PLA to match the character. I scale it up to 200 mm on the z-axis, I use 0.18 mm layer height, no infill and 3 parameters on the wall. 
I use auto support, but I did not check the support in the print preview and it seems that the support was not created for every finger and it looks like that my hook will be fingerless. Here is my hook, it's green and full of muscles, it looks like the guy you shouldn't mess with, even if he is slightly disabled. By the way, I did print the missing fingers, I just need to find some super glue. Next, I decided to print something with even more details. I found this fancy skull, which has some amazing level of details, but it is a little bit creepy. Anyway, I print it. I found that the 0.18mm layer height works very nice and I use it here again on this print. When the printer was done, I took my print removal tool and after a few blows, the skull was free from the glass plate. I probably used too much glue stick. It took me a few minutes to take off all the support from this model and this is the result. It's pretty awesome print and amazing design 3D model, but it is look still a bit creepy. Anyway, nice design. I think that we are pretty much done with the PLA, but just for fun, I print these two honeycomb ways, one in 100% and other in 200% scale. I got very nice results on a both prints, but make sure that you print these ways in a normal mode if you want them to hold the water. Ways mode for this model is a very fragile and it leaves a lot of holes and imperfection in the printing part. For those who wonder about the print quality with the PTG, ABS and flex filament, I did a quick test print as well. I print this octopus model in a 200% scale using the Aprinta Pro Silver PTG and the results was great. Then I print the octopus again in 200% scale with the ABS and I got great results, no warping and no broken layers. Thanks to the high power AC heated bed and the insulation underneath who helped with the maintaining the temperature after the printing was finished, which cools down the glass plate nice and slow. Very important to cool down ABS nice and slow if you don't want to have any crack layers. For the flex filament, I needed to lower the print speed to 30 mm a second and that's why I print this octopus in 100% scale just to save some print time. Some settings that is important to change if you want to print with a flex filament is that you need to lower retraction speed to only 1 mm to prevent the nozzle clocks. Overall very nice results and you can print the flex filament with no problem with this printer mostly thanks to Titan extruder. He's still alive. And now the final words. So now after I spent some quality time testing this printer, I can say that this machine is a very well built and designed. In terms of hardware and the build quality, I have no complaints. In terms of print quality, it's not the best that I've seen out from the box, but with some fine tuning in a firmware that I showed you, you can get very nice prints with this machine. To my opinion, this is the best machine that the TiVo has ever produced and I test every single printer from the TiVo. And if you ask me which printer should I get from the TiVo, I chose this one every time. Alright guys, that was my review of the TiVo Flash. Purchasing link you can find in the video description. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.